Section 3.2 is on page 110, talks about solutions of linear homogeneous equations. We know what those are, we know it's a linear homogeneous, we know what that is. And they add something new, the Vonskyan, something you might have learned in Math 10, or maybe not, but I'll go over it anyways. Theorem 3.2.1 talks about existence and uniqueness. So the existence of a solution and the uniqueness of a solution. Consider this initial value problem, second order linear differential equation. Make sure that's always a one and everything will match. Then you could read P, Q, and G that they're talking about. Given initial conditions, again, same, this is initial value problem. Suppose that this P, Q, and G are continuous on the open interval i that contains this specific t naught so that's in the interval this problem has exactly one solution that's the unique and the solution exists throughout the interval so i'm going to jump to number six first and tackle this this is a very short section we're repeating what we did in chapter two one more time we're going to do this three times so when I look at this, it says in problem six and nine through nine, determine the longest interval in which the given initial value problem is certain to have a unique twice differentiable solution. Do not attempt to solve. We solve those later. This is 3.5. So if I want to look at this, well, what's the key? The key is to ensure that that's a one. It's not. So you divide by it. And now that this is a one, guess what? All what you want, you want to ensure that those are continuous. Well, let's see. This is not continuous at zero. Zero is the only point that would make P not continuous. Actually, this is Q in this case. So get rid of zero, which means you broke this into one of two intervals. Either you're looking at this interval, or you're looking at this interval, one of the two. Either t is less than zero, or two is bigger than zero. Well, guess what? This is where, this is where you really determine which of those include the initial, and the initial in this case is a one. Where is one? Since one is right there, you're gonna say, if t happened to be between zero and infinity, then you are guaranteed a unique solution. And there it is. Number eight, same deal. That is a one already. So I'm looking at a cosine of t. Well, that's continuous everywhere. I'm looking at natural log of t. Well, if I look at natural log of t, I need t to be <coughs> not equal to zero because it's an absolute value. The same deal happens. Zero is the only point I can't have. So in this case, I go to zero and I take that out. That means I'm looking at one of two regions in this case. It's just a coincidence that it happened to be zero. And it's just a coincidence that when I look at the initial, it happened to be on the positive. So if t is between zero to infinity, I am guaranteed a solution. Not only that, it's unique. All right, Ronskian is a really quick way of determining linear dependence or independence. So, Ronskian says, given y1, y2, the Ronskian w of t is, you list y1, y2, and you take a derivative of each, kind of like what you did back in the days in 5c, and you find the determinant of that uh, of that list or matrix if you want to call it and there it is so given y double prime plus p of t y prime plus q of t y plus g of t where this p this q and this g are continuous on some interval i y1 and y2 would form a fundamental set what's a fundamental set i'll tell you in a minute of the solutions of the differential equation if y1 and y2 if those two y's 
are solutions to this differential equation and any linear combination is a solution. Two, the Ronskian evaluated at any value doesn't equal zero. It turns out if this Ronskian doesn't equal zero, those solutions would be linearly independent. So going back to what does a fundamental set mean? It means each of those would be a solution, number one, and number two, they are linearly independent. So what you do, you find the Ronskian. If it doesn't equal zero, you say they're linearly independent. That's how I memorized it back in the days. Of course, there are six different ways of showing that a system of equations is linearly independent or dependent. You learned that in math then. Well, this is a quick way. So we start with problem number two. It says, find the Ronskian. They're not saying much. Just find the Ronskian, nothing else. Well, if I want to find the Ronskian of t, I would say w of t would be, and the way it works, you would find the determinant cosine of t, sine of t, a derivative of this, and a derivative of sine is cosine of t. And Ronskian, you would simply find the determinant minus a minus plus sine squared of t. That would be a 1. You're done right there. That's all they want. For us, we're going to say, I'm adding now. This doesn't equal 0. Therefore, cosine of t and sine of t are linearly independent. The red part is not needed for this problem. I'm just adding it because I, that's where we're going. The same deal. I'm looking at problem number 4. And I'm trying to figure out what the one skin is. And the reason we use the one skin to check if these are linearly independent. So basically, I could pretty much go this route. I could say the Ronskian is actually, list this, take a derivative of each. Well, that's going to be e to the t sine of t plus e to the t cosine of t. And this is going to be e to the t cosine of t minus e to the t sine of t. Right? And if I want to take the Ronskian, that would be the product of those. That's e to the 2t sine of t cosine of t minus e to the 2t sine squared of t minus e to the 2t cosine of t sine of t plus e to the 2t cosine squared of t. Now, to really ease your pain, take e to the t out of all of those. This is going to be sine of t cosine of t minus sine squared of t minus cosine of t sine of t minus cosine squared of t. Those two cancel out. If you factor a negative out, you will end up with the sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t. And that would be negative e to the 2t times 1, which is negative e to the 2t. As far as this problem is concerned, you're done right there. I'm adding to this. That does not equal 0. Therefore, those two are linearly independent. I need to be linearly independent and solutions to form a fundamental set. Fundamental set I played with in the previous section. I just didn't say that. I'm going to show you really quick. If you looked at 3, 1, do you remember this part that I listed? Those were fundamental sets. I didn't check because we didn't have to. These are, these form fundamental set. These form fundamental set. And these form, where are they? Fundamental set. Fundamental set. We didn't check, but now that we know about this in 3.3 3 and on, we're going to check. And here's a problem. The last problem in this section, number 20. It says, verify that y1 and y2 are solutions to the given differential equations. Do they constitute a fundamental set of the equation? If I was to ask that, well, first, this is y1. Let's see. Is y1 a solution to this 
system of equations well what do i need i need y y prime so y one prime is e to the t and y one double prime is e to the t so let's check if i plug that in that looks like e to the t minus 2 e to the t plus e to the t well that is zero it does check secondly if i take y2 y2 prime is derivative of the first times the second the product rule and y2 double prime will be e to the t plus the product rule derivative of the first times the second plus t e to the t so this is pretty much 2 e to the t plus t e to the t and now if i plug those in to check so if i take y sub 2 i'm looking at 2 e to the t plus t e to the t minus 2 times the first derivative plus t e to the t again you could save yourself a lot of pain by taking e to the t out that's 2 plus t minus 2 minus 2t two plus t that is e to the t times those two cancel out and that would be a zero that would be zero so it checks those are solutions that's not enough you have to show me they are solutions and you're going to take the ronsky in of t and you're going to say well let's see e to the t <coughs> excuse me t e to the t take a derivative that's e to the t take a derivative it's right there and that would be e to the 2t plus t e to the t minus t e to the 2t that would be e to the 2t which doesn't equal zero therefore e to the t and t e to the t are linearly independent and hence yes they constitute a fundamental set that's what we're going to use from a fundamental set on the next sections in three 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 four three five three seven three three and there's the homework section 3.2 on page 119 we're going to do number 1 3 11 odd 19 and 20